caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Notice there I use the word belief. The word belief is what I believe in to be something dangerous or something that can cause pain. I told on myself when I told you guys that I am one that does not like fear, like heights. I told you heights is one of the things that causes me to be afraid. And it's not so much of the height, it's the emotions and the thoughts that comes with the fact of being so high up. It is the spirit of fear begin to whisper in my ear that I'm going to fall. It began to tell me that I am going to lose my balance. It began to tell me that if I fall, I'm going to hit the ground. And hitting the ground it brings all of these emotions and, and all of these feelings to me, making me believe and think that I'm going to hurt myself really, really bad. So the spirit of fear comes along and tells me all of these things up to such a point where I myself begin to become dizzy. I become to become dizzy and I become I, I become shaky in my in my legs or in my arms or I begin to find myself nervous because of what I'm hearing in my ear. The spirit of fear operates by speaking things to us to cause us to believe that we are in danger even when we're not in danger. What I found that in the, with the spirit of fear, which we could get from our Hebrew word, paha, remember? Paha simply, it simply means something came upon me to cause me to tremble and make my bones shake. The spirit of fear causes us to tremble and causes our bones to shake so that we would not be able to move no further than we are. When you put me, no matter how far I am from the edge of the building or whatever I'm on top of, I would not go to the edge because of the fear of falling over the edge. One of the reasons why that fear is there is because I don't have enough evidence to believe that whatever is there holding me up is going to keep me from falling over. I don't have enough evidence or I don't have enough knowledge to believe that whatever I'm standing on could, can handle my weight. Mm -hmm. It can handle, I feel that maybe if the wind blows too hard or maybe if I trip or if someone comes and push me that I'm going to go over. The enemy tells us so many things to stop us from going forward. How many times when God asks us or you to go forward in something, how many times the voices begin to come? How many times the voices begin to come and tell you that you're not going to be able to do what it is that God created you to do? How many times the forces come and tell you, if you try or if you go do this, that this or that is going to happen? It makes us feel like there's going to be some sort of rejection or some sort of pain or some sort of hurt. This is the spirit of fear operating, and the spirit of fear comes to stop us from doing what God wanted us to do. Last time we was together, we talked about being witnesses before the Lord and how that we witness before the Lord, but there's fear that creeps in and tell us that if we go and talk to him or her, how, the, how they will reject what God has to say. How that we feel that there's going to be a backlash or we're going to feel that something could happen wrong to stop us from being able to be effective in our witnessing to others. So with that being said, that fear has stopped many of us from even going into the harvest field. Many of us will not go into the harvest field because we are afraid that if we go in the harvest field, we're going to be rejected and the people that we're trying to talk to is going to not want to receive what we have to say. So let's look at our base scripture. Let's look at our base scripture and let's get a little bit more and let's dig into a little bit more of this so that we can understand it from another point of view. O David is, 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 have written this and David says that he will bless the Lord at all times. He said his praises should continually be in his mouth. He said his soul is boasting in the Lord. He humble, the humble and the downtrodden will hear and he rejoice. 
He says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us magnify his name together. He said, Four is the one I want to draw attention to. He said, I sought the Lord on the authority of his word. He answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. So there is a deliverance that take place that can take place of every fear that you and I have. And he given us the key, it is in the seeking of the Lord. He said, I sought him and he answered me as I sought. You have to understand the reason, the very reason why we are afraid is because we don't have yet enough information about the thing that God is telling us about or telling us to do. If God, if, if I, when I'm on the building and I'm standing there and I'm nervous and I'm afraid, if I will seek God, ask God, is, is, is this building able to hold me? If this, is this not, is this my time or not? If I seek the Lord and get the answers that I need, then God will deliver me from that fear at that moment. If you will seek the Lord when it comes to time for you to witness, if you will seek the Lord when it's time for you to lay hands, if you seek the Lord when the time is to prophesy, whatever it is that God asks you to do, did you seek God on it or did you just do what you want to do? I have trained you and let you know that even when it comes to ministering to somebody, you don't just say what you think or you ought to say. I told you that when you, when, as they speaking to you, you begin to do what? Seek God at that very moment, praying, praying in your head, asking God, what is it that God would like to say to that individual? One of the things that we get in trouble with is we start to, when we think that I, we have enough knowledge to give to people when we don't, when we have not sought God for the information that they need. You may tell me a scripture, but the scripture that you're telling me is may not be what I need at that moment. You don't know what I really need because I could be telling you something, but not telling you the full story. So if I'm going, to, if you're going to effectively minister to me, you're going to have to get to the God who knows me, who sees me, who knows what's really what's going on, to be able to minister to me what God is saying. Does that make sense to anybody? So we're going to have to learn to seek the Lord so that all of the fears that we have surrounding the things that God wants us to do can fade away. Okay? So it's very important as leaders of this ministry, as people of God, one of the biggest things that I, I, I still in you and I'm pushing you a lot is to always seek God. Never seek your own opinion. Never seek your own advice. Even when you think you know the answer. Because there's times where I, where I, there are many times where someone comes to me and I feel that I know the answer, and I know the answer, and a lot of times when I go to God, it is the answer that I was thinking, but I want to make sure that I am addressing the right situation. Because sometimes we can address situation and not address the right situation, and the leader, that person can walk out empty and walk out not receiving what it is that they need to receive. As a leader, one of the things that's very important that we give people exactly what they need so that they can keep going on in life. If not, then what happens is that we, the enemy is able to continue to come in and rob them and steal from them and take from them the very thing that they need. Come on, somebody. So it's very important. He said he delivered me from all. Not some of my fears, not part of my fears, but every one of my fears. What that tells you and I that everybody that you everybody that you encounter, we all have some sort of fear to something. Okay? We you may not express your fears as easily as I may express mine, but that doesn't mean that there is not a fear there. No matter how tough, big, and, and rough people tend to be, you don't understand there's a fear there that 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 can be broken if we seek God in it. To help bring them to deliverance. From fear, we have to seek God because God removes our fears as well as theirs. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. I got to get enough of the information in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've dealt with some people that was that I would consider was great theologians, people that have known the Bible backwards, able to tell me things that I have not even heard of, or even thought I heard of, but yet and still, by me seeking God in the middle of that, that had took me in over advance over them, and then them sit there thinking that they were going to teach me, sit down and listen to what I had to say, because I learned to pull mine from God and not from what I have studied. Come on, somebody. 
my fears are the reason why I don't fear because I recognize that God is with me. Now, when you recognize God is with you, then that removes a lot of fears because you know God can answer any situation that you find yourself into. Come on, somebody. So let's go to Judges 6 and 11. <clears throat> let's go to Judges 6 and 11. Let's look at how this thing plays out. So as a, as, as a, as a, as a person of God, people are going to come to you. People sometimes, and I told you before, sometimes people as leaders, people will bypass the bishop and go straight to you. And, and, it, and, it, and it's okay because in most cases, unfortunately, when it comes to members in the congregation, from my experience, a lot of members are a little intimidated by the bishop. I, why? I have no idea. But at the same time, they are. But you are being prepared to be able to handle those questions, those information that they need that they scared to get from the bishop or the bishop just does not have the time to give that because he's over here doing something else. Okay, so you are being placed in position or getting in position or getting prepared to handle some of the hard questions. Some of the questions in today's time where you got a lot of the young folks out here nowadays believe that in the, in, in the mother earth in the universe and, and all of these other things instead of your God. Why should I serve your Jesus? Why Jesus? Why him instead of all of the other gods they're supposed to be? And you're going to have to be able to handle that and answer that because I found myself answering questions before with, as a young man because I learned the power of yielding to God from the beginning. One of the things that my bishop taught me was to learn how to yield to the Spirit of God. Once you learn how to yield to the Spirit of God, you get out of the way and let God answer the questions. And once you let God answer the question, you will be surprised that there's not a question that can really stop you. Because God knows all and everything. So in Judges 6 and 11, let's look at this. It says, Now the angel of the Lord came and said unto a uh, Tirbeth tree of Oprah, which belonged to Joaz the Abazite, and his son Gideon was beating wheat in the wine press instead of the threshing floor to hide it and to save it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O brave man. But Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why are all this is happening to us? And where are all his wondrous work which we are, which our fathers told us about? When, did, when they said, did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midianites. Now understand, I want you to look at this now. Because Gideon here represents many of us in a lot of cases. Gideon, when, when the Spirit of the Lord came to Gideon and told Gideon who he was, getting ready to put Gideon in an assignment, Gideon began to come up with excuses. Now, the reason why he came up with these different excuses is because Gideon was in fear. The reason why Gideon was in fear is because Gideon was looking at what was going on around him instead of worrying about what God was saying to him. Okay. And many of us are given fear based on what we see around us instead of looking at God who's above us. Now, he was looking at the situation, and all he can remember is that, first of all, number one, one of the things is we're, 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 we're captive. Two, I heard about all of the wonderful things that you did, but I haven't seen any of them. Another thing that I figured out, I mean, you got me in hiding right now. So you got to understand where his mindset is at concerning God speaking to him about who he is. He did not, not see himself as a mighty man of God. He didn't see himself as a man of God at all. Because at the same time, he said that God called him a brave man or a mighty man. And at the same time, Gideon could not accept what he said based on what he seen. How many of us do not accept what God say about us based on what we see? Mm -hmm. Now, come on. We're going to be honest up in here. Come on, let's be real. Because we know as people of God, we base a lot of things on what we see instead of what God said. Because what we see is more tangible. It makes more sense than what we say. Oh, what God said, brother. So let me look at this. It says, but Gideon said to him, okay, 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in this strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midians. Have I not sent you? Now, one of the things that Gideon did not understand and he didn't recognize 
that God already knew his shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And just because God, you have shortcomings doesn't mean God doesn't pick you. Mm -hmm. God picked him even with his shortcomings so God knew what he was able to do through him. Now, getting in at the same time is looking at all these situations, looking at all the reasons why he cannot do what God needed him to do. He's looking at all the reasons of why he ain't not going to be able to do it at all. But God's let him know that I need you to recognize something. Go in, this, go in this strength of yours and know that I have I not sent you. What that means is I, you have to go with the confidence of knowing that I have authorized you to do what it is that I'm calling you to do. Mm -hmm. The reason why many of us is in fear because we don't we go without authorization. And if you're going without authorization, then you're not going to feel authorized to do what it is that God called you to do. If you're going to do what God called you to do, then you're going to have to, first of all, get the authorization from God. This is why things got to be done decently and in order. God is a God of order. God does not just do whatever you, you cannot just do whatever you want to do. We have to do what we do in order. If we expect God to still show up and to help us, if we expect God to show up and give us the authorization to do what it is that we need to be done, we got the way of God to send us. Right. He said, I see you, I go with you, so you don't have to worry about those that reject you. So those that don't accept, accept your authorization, it's not your authorization they're going to reject. It's the authorization that I give you. Now, if I'm sending you and you're going with my authorization, it got to work. So this right here, right now, getting you should, some of this fear should be alleviating. Some of this fear should be removing off of your heart, off of your spirit, because now you understand that you are doing this with me and not yourself. Right. I'm doing with you. Okay, so if I'm with you, you are you you're good in this matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then he says, but Gideon said to him, to him, please, Lord, how am I to rescue Israel? Behold, my family is the least significant in Manasseh, and I'm the youngest. I'm the smallest in my father's house. I mean, there's, in other words, there's others in my father's house that is more qualified than I am. Mm -hmm. Sound like somebody we know, no? It, 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 Lord, baby, me now. At my our house, the people in our family, we're the least. Nobody even consider us. We're the worst of the worst. We're not the ones. You are missing. You are missing what you're supposed to be looking for. Mm -hmm. But see, what we don't understand that God chooses how He chooses. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we will grab ourselves crazy trying to figure out why did God choose them. Why did God choose that person? Why did God choose? Understand, if you're chosen by God, you're authorized by God. And if you're authorized by God, now we wait on the permission of God to move as God wants us to move. See, I don't move whenever I feel like I move the way God wants me to move. You know, people, you know, I hear all the time, oh, Bishop, why don't you put this on a telegram? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this on? Because I'm waiting for authorization. I wait for authorization. Yeah, God had put me in hell with a thing, but I still ahead of. I mean, He's still ahead of me. So I don't do what I want to do because I'm up under, I'm up under His authority. So when He said move, I move. He said stop, I stop. He said sit, I sit. Why? Because I understand after I understand authority. And as a leader, you want to have to understand authority. If you want to see the anointing and power of God move through you, if you want to see great things happen through you, you're going to have to operate under the authority of God by being obedient to God unto death. It's not something that we do for a minute, not something we do for a second, because as God gives it, God can take it away. So we don't want to get to that point where he's taking nothing away. We want him to give and continue to give. In order for him to continue to give, we're going to have to recognize and understand what it is that God is giving us. Does that make sense to anyone? Okay, so let's go a little deeper. It says, he said, he said, Lord, I'm going to leave my father's house. Then the Lord answered him, I will certainly be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites as in as if there was only one man. In other words, you're going to knock out, I understand what you're looking at. You're looking at the many, many nights with so many of them. And he was looking at the, the vast majority of them, and he figured they was way outnumbered. But God said that I'm going to spike them as one man. Meaning that just as you, you think that you're going out to fight all of them, but simply because you're going with me, all of them, that number means nothing. Because 
they can't come up against me. They're not bigger than me. So you have to understand the fears, the things that the enemy is trying to use that make bigger than you. And you make it bigger than me personally, but you're not bigger than the God that's in me. Amen. And the God that's in me is bigger than this situation that you're trying to bring against me. So come on with it because you're going to lose. He said, I'm going to show, I'm going to cause you to strike them down as if they were one man. My God. Gideon replied to him, if I had found favor in your sight, then show me a sign. See, see what I'm saying? He's still, he's still having a hard time with this, okay? He's still having a hard time. Go ahead, if, 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 Okay, I hear what you're saying. I, I heard all that you said. I, 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 I'm feeling a little good about it, but I'm still need a little sign from you. And, then, and, and, and the reason why is because I'm still looking at my circumstance. I'm still looking at the fact of who I am. I'm still looking at the fact that I'm the smallest in my family house. I'm still looking at our family is the least in Manasseh. I'm still looking at the situation. I'm still looking at it that I heard about the one that was working here, but the one that was working, it's like you do it for everybody else, but they're not done it for me. So I'm having problems, God, because I see everything. I see all around me, but I don't see nothing happening for me. Our eyes, our own sight sometimes can be a mess. The Bible says that our eyes offend us, pluck them out. Now, God is not, now God not telling you to pluck out your natural eye. Okay? What well, God is telling you, if whatever is causing you a problem in your vision, remove it. Remove it so that you can see the truth. He at this moment still can't see the truth. No matter how many times God promised to go with them, no matter how many times God promised to be with them, no matter how many times God told him that he's going to have the strength to do this, no matter what God said, he still had an issue with this. So me a sign. If you show me a sign, if you just, if you show me, show me, let me see it, because a sign is for something we can see. Now see, I, 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 I'm, tired, I'm looking at it in a negative, but if you show me it in a positive, if you show me that it's going to happen, then I'll I believe you. Mm. So look at God. What God, what God did in this situation. He says, 18, he said, please do not depart from here until I come back and bring my offer and place it before you. And he said, I will wait until you return. Now, now look at the beauty of God. God is so merciful and so graceful that he knew that he was dealing with this man that had issues. He knew that he was dealing with someone that had the spirit of fear. But to get the fear out of him, he, he knew he had to see, let him see something instead of what he had been seeing. See, he got so conditioned to what he had been seeing that he thought that he was going to be, that they're going to always be slaves to the Midianites. They thought, for they gonna, this is their lot, this is the way it's going to be, it's never going to change. How many of us can do that one? This is never going to change. It's been like this for the last 20. We, we, how many of us do it? How many times have we look at situations and say, oh man, it's been, here we go again, round and round again. I've been through this over and over again. And this preacher, he always talk about it's going to change, but it's never going to change. He had, this was his vision. But at the same time, God said, okay, I'm going to have to change your vision because I, I know now that the spirit of fear is there crippling you from moving. So since you're not going to move, I'm going to change your vision, so I will wait. So then Gideon prepared a young goat, 19, and a leaven bread from a ephod of fowl. The meat, he put it in a basket and broth in a, pot, in a pot, and he brought the food to him under the tree and presented it. And the angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat, the unleavened bread, and lay it on this rock and pour out off the block, the, the, I'm sorry, the broth over them. And he did it. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that he had in his hand, touched the meat in the unleavened bread, and fire and fire flared up in a rock and consumed the meat in the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. When Gideon realized this, the Bible says, without any doubt that he was in the he was he was the angel of the Lord, he declared, Oh no, Lord God. For now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face, and I'm doomed. Okay, here we go. Now he, now he God said, okay, I'm going to show you something. I showed it to him. Now he's afraid of what he saw. Okay, so you got to understand now that this fear thing ain't no joke. And you see how it doesn't want to let him go? It is, it's just it, it is there, and it's just robbing, and it's just crippling, and it's just standing there, and it just will not let him go for nothing. Okay? But then look at this. 
Then the Lord said to him, peace be to you. Do not be afraid. You shall not die. Then Gideon built the altar there to the Lord and named it the Lord, the Lord is peace. To this day, it is still in Oprah of the Amorites. Now on the same night, the Lord said to Gideon, take your father's bull, the second bull, seven years old, tear down the altar of Baal that belongs to your fathers and cut down the Azareth that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this mountain. This, uh, this mountain stronghold with stones laid down in an ordinary way. Now you gotta understand now, he's, he, he's, he's asking him to go and tear down a, 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 a uh, idol that the Midianites worshiped, okay? Now you gotta understand now, this is the same one that is afraid, and you asking me to go do what? You asking me to go tear this down and to build an altar on top of it, you know, wait a minute. Now, this, this is a lot for me. Remember now, I'm the smallest of my father's family. I'm, I'm the, least from the, least from the least family in the, in the area, and you want me to do it, okay? Now, understand and recognize, now look at God. God knows that he's fearful, but yet it's still God giving him marching orders. God giving him authority to do it because he knows that somewhere in between this, he's going to click in and recognize it ain't him that's doing it, it's the Lord that's doing it. If you want to overcome fear, you're going to have to recognize that it ain't you going out here doing anything. It's, it's you going out and allowing God to do it. Pastor Jenna gave a um, testimony, I think, well, a couple weeks ago, how uh, her and uh, uh, Mr. Raymond was out, and they had to, they were trying to feed some homeless people in the middle of the night. And at the same time, they, was, they were just driving up and down looking for homeless people in the dark, in these dark areas, and they had to drive in these dark areas. And they, I'm sure it got to a point where it got a little bit fearful, and I think it got even a little bit more fearful for Pastor Shannon because she put Minister Raymond out to him to go do it, and she didn't go with it. But, <laughs> but at the same time, but at the same time, I understand he's a man and she's a woman. But at the same time, he went out there bold enough Gave these people some food, gave these people a drink, gave these people a, a car to the ministry, and then turn around, the man turns around, looked at him and said, I was just praying and asking God for this particular drink that you picked up. When you operate without fear, God will tell you exactly what the person that need is needed. Would you be surprised how what you can what God can want to use you to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you think you have, God wants you to take and give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. In this situation, if you look at uh, Gideon, getting in this situation now where it's like, okay, I need you to do what I need you to do, and not get wrapped up in your feelings, not get wrapped up in your in what house you came from. Don't get wrapped up on how small you are. Don't get wrapped up in this. Don't get wrapped up in that. Just go because you're going in my authority. Understand, you have the authority to do what it is that I called you to do, so go, okay? 27 said, did he, then Gideon took 10 men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. Now that's the beauty right there. He did what the Lord has told him, but because he was too afraid of his father's household, relatives, and the men of the city to do it during the day, like he did it at night. Now, I, I, I can't, I, he did it, I can't be mad at him, but he didn't, he didn't do it in the day, he did it at night, because he, again, he was worried about the repossession. He was worried about what can come back at him. Many times we don't do what we do because we're worrying about what somebody's going to do after we try doing it. See, we fear. We you fear. I'm, I'm sure that if, when you were walking up to that young man, Minister Ray, I, I bet you several times there was a fear that they was not going to accept what you had to say. Or they was going to act funny towards you. Or they're going to shoo you away. Or whatever now. They're going to sick their dog on you. Or whatever the situation may be. We have all of these fears of why we don't do what we want to do. God call us to do. Or these people are not going to like us no more. They won't be our friends anymore. Or they're not going to invite us to the parties no more. They're not going to do it. Because we're so busy trying to be like them instead of being like Christ for them. So we don't have to go past that. He was afraid, but he did it. Okay? So 28 says, early in the morning, on in the next morning, when the men of the city got up and they discovered that the altar of Baal was torn down, and the Asherah which was beside it was cut down, and a second bull was offered on the altar which had been built. 
So they said to one to another, who have done this thing? When, when they searched about and inquired, they was told Gideon, the son of Joash, did it. Now, it's something about when it's, it's something about when you do what God needs you to do, how God put you on the front street. <laughs> See, God had put him right on front street. Now everybody knows it was him that did it. Now, now the men of the, of the, of the city, they're mad, they're upset. Now, can you imagine his fears now? <laughs> I mean, his fears have to go through the roof at this moment. Mm -hmm. Because now he's like, oh my God, I did this, and now these people are going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Now, it's funny that he would think that way because earlier, God said, you should not die. Mm -hmm. So he, if he would hold on to what God had said to him, then a lot of the fears would not be there. If we will hold on to what God has said to us, a lot of the fears that we deal with won't be there. Come on, somebody. If you just hold on to what God has to say. It says in 30, Then the men of the city said to Joel, You ready to bring him out? Bring your son out so that we may execute him. Bring him out. Because he had torn down the altar of Baal and cut down the asherah which was beside it. But Joel said to all who stood against him, Will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? Whoever plead for Baal should be put to death while it's still morning. If Baal is a God, if, if this God is so much of a God, let him defend himself because someone tore down his altar. Therefore, on the day he named Gideon Jeroboam, Baal, meaning let Baal plead because he had torn down his altar. In other words, he said to him, if he's so much of a God, then why are y'all defending him? The church, the true God, the true living God defends himself. Mm -hmm. you, you guys are going to come after him for what he's done, but you don't understand that what he's done, he's done under the authorization of God. Mm -hmm. When you do what you're supposed to do under the authorization of God, notice now his father stood up for him. Notice now, others stand up for you because God has a host of people that is out there doing the very things that you are calling you to do. And he have a host of people that will stand with you, will, 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 will work with you, and stand and help defend you in the matter when the enemy is trying to come against you. You got to understand that what you do, you don't do alone. You do under the authority and power of God. I'm saying, uh, the reason why we're bringing this out tonight, because I know that we're going into a season, as God has shown me, and he won't let this, I can't get past this, he keep dropping this in my spirit about the harvest. And he keep telling me that the harvest is plenty, the harvest is plenty, and I need my labor, I need my labor, I need my labor, I need my labor. So here at God's Way of Faith International Ministries, the laborers here have to get them out in that field. We're going to have to get out there in that field and we're going to have to start getting these people primed, right, pulled in into the body of Christ. Getting these people because we don't know what hour we're really in. You don't know how, how dangerous it is for them to be outside of the Lord right now. This is not the time to play with God. This is not the time to straddle the fence. This is not the time to act like you're in and not really in. This is not time to be lukewarm. This is the time to make a decision. You get time for us to draw the line in the sand, and those that's for the Lord come on this side, and those that's not for the Lord go over there. It is that time because we are in a time now where the enemy is showing himself up daily and in every way possible. And it is not time for us to be fearful, nervous, and scared. It is time for us, under the authority of God, to get out there and go to work. Hallelujah. We have to understand what God is doing and why God is doing what he's doing. <clears throat> so tonight I wanted just to touch on just for a few minutes that authorization that we're waiting on. The Bible says for us to go in the highways and the byways and preach the gospel, teach them, baptize them, Lay hands on the sick, watch them recover. The question is, who you laid your hand on last? Who you ministered to last? Who do you help last? Come on, stand with me. 
which we serve a God that has more power than anything that can come against anybody in this room or anybody on that camera. There is no need to fear. There is no need to worry. There is no need to be scared. Let's get in that harvest. Let's get out there in that field. And let's go to work. Father God, we come before your throne. And Lord God, we come and we repent. Father, we repent if we have not been doing what it is you call us to do. Father, we ask for the authorization to go forth in your field. We ask for the authorization, God, to go forth to help others find you, to help others come to you, to help others learn about you. Father, give us the courage to lay hands on the sick. Give us the courage to preach, O oh God, to those, dear God, that needs to hear about the good news. Teach us, Lord, on how to win a, a soul to you. Teach us, Lord, on how to help them confess Jesus as Lord. Help us, oh God, to win many souls for you. So that many souls, oh God, so that all heaven can rejoice over the souls that are coming. Not only to this ministry, but to the whole body. We thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you're getting ready to do in the lives of your people. Bless them. Father, we send them now. We send them, Lord God, like sheep among wolves, but having the knowledge and power to overcome every wolf that tried to come against them. We thank you for your anointing and your power that rests above over them. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives and Father, for every one of them. Dear God, that go forth, we pray that you go with them. That we do none of this alone. That everything that we do, we do in you and through you. Father, we line up. And we wait on our marching orders. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this message. Share it. Maybe you're not a leader. Maybe you have not been called into that yet at your ministry in the church. But this is a word that's not just for leaders alone. This is the word for the body of Christ. Eat of it, receive of it, and walk in it. Let God use you. There's a young man right now, I see you. You, you've been wondering how in the world do you do one start to do this? Just ask God for the authorization and go. There's a young woman that's been, that's been held back in the church. I can see you now being held back in the church and you're tired. They won't let you do anything in the ministry. In fact, the, 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 the lady of the house don't like you. And that's the reason why you've been having a hard time going forward. God is going to disconnect you. And then connect you where you ought to be. So that you can go forth and do what needs to be done. Do it in order. There's no need to burn a bridge. Do it in order. God's going to instruct you on exactly how to do it. And you're going to have a meeting within the next three days. And you're going to walk in and you're going to say, that is time for your season is finished there. And they're going to release you. The, 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 the wife is going to be happy because you're leaving. I ain't said like that, but she's going to be happy. But they're going to miss you. Because if they knew what was in you, they would hold on. But your season is up, so be willing to leave. Make that move. It's going to be okay. You don't do it alone. God is with you. I want you 
use that number down on the, down in the in the description. Give us a call. Give us a call. I want to pray with you. And if you need instructions on exactly how to do this, I will show you through the Spirit of God. Amen. See you in the next one.